Hello everybody, I am Martin Ogrin at Spider Martin and today I will walk you through uh, Dubai Autodrome International uh, layout of the circuit. It's the latest circuit I've been racing on here in Dubai and the track itself, Dubai Autodrome, is quite interesting because it has multiple layouts which you can uh, choose from and it uh, greatly changes the characteristics of the circuit. For example, the national layout is much more flowing with long corners and international, the one that we are uh, analyzing today. It is much more stop and go aggressive, longer straights, so the setup of the bike and the riding as well is quite different. So that's enough of the talking, let's uh, analyze it and let's go through it step by step. So here we are on the main straight, sixth gear. By the way, the bike I'm riding is uh, Yamaha R6. It is a stock engine, uh, stock electronics, but it is upgraded with some uh, suspensions, a better brake, stuff like that. So generally it's uh, nothing special, but it's a proper race prepared bike, just for info. Here we go on the main straight. It is a sixth gear. And what you need to take care of first is the braking point. Oh, there was a small lag there. Let's go one again. So sixth gear, full throttle. And what you want to look for is this change in asphalt. It is quite easily visible from the bike. The color change of the asphalt. That's our braking reference point. Now, depending on the type of the bike that you have, for example, 600 or 1000, uh, uh, also depending on the how good you exited out of the last corner, all of this stuff, of course, change your uh, final top speed. So also change your braking point, but usually around this point is where you want to brake. I personally, when I'm really pushing, like to break a little bit afterwards so you can see clearly the mark 100 meters sometimes when i'm pushing i'm breaking in between those two so the line and the marker and sometimes uh, i break before one thing you also need to have in mind is that uh, here in dubai autodrome it often blows wind so you can have a tailwind from behind which makes you faster obviously or you can have a headwind so that's also something uh, you need to consider when we're talking about the breaking point. But enough of the breaking point, let's, uh, let's dig into the track. Here you heard uh, we had three gears down, so we're shifting from sixth to third. Also, it's not quite visible on the video, but the track is going a lot downhill here. And it also has some bumps. It is not so extreme, but there are some bumps. And all of this stuff combined can make your bike slide a little bit. And also what is uh, one of the big characteristic of this racetrack is of course sand. As we all know, Dubai is uh, in the middle of the desert, so to speak. And uh, sand is quite an, often, uh, quite an often concern here especially during the morning session. So you, what you need to be considerate of is that uh, sometimes they may be sand also on ideal line. So it is really easy to lose, uh, to lose the grip and lose control of the bike because sand is uh, much more uh, unpredictable than, uh, than riding in uh, normal conditions. You hit the apex here inside. And now there are a few different styles you can take through this corner, but the one I like the most is that I keep a little bit corner speed when I'm exiting out and I like to exit quite smoothly, but progressively. I go on the throttle early, but not so aggressive. When you're riding a V shape, so to speak, or stop and go, 
you lose too much speed on the entry and then you need to compensate for that on the exit and you need to open more aggressively open early and that can cause some uh, some sliding also one more thing you need to have in mind is that right about here you cannot see but you can really feel it on a racetrack right about here there's a big bump I almost high-sided myself a few times there when I was pushing. So you need to go over the, this bump with a constant throttle. And then after you jump, then you can give more and more throttle to accelerate out. Now the braking point here also varies uh, depending on how fast you approach the corner, but it's generally somewhere between 150 uh, meter markers. Uh, the faster I go, the of course, before I need to brake, but you can also play a lot with the uh, entry corner speed. So with the entry speed, sorry. Uh, I found myself that uh, not, that braking a little bit earlier, and carrying more momentum through this first corner, because this is the chicane you'll see later, carrying a bit more speed through this first left-hander allows you to exit out on a big straight, which is coming ahead uh, much more calm and with much more speed, which is, of course, what we want when we're entering the long straight. Of course, you need to be precise, try to hit your... Uh, knee try to hit the curb with your knee so that you're not losing any any space so when you're with your knee on the curb that means your wheels are right about here where the asphalt is so you don't want to go on the paint because that's slippery especially here on uh dubai autodrome the curbs and the paint everything is super super slippery so you don't want to be on the paint but you also don't want to waste so much space when, uh, when you're entering the corner. Quick change of direction. Now here you can easily see, I mean easily, you can see the difference between uh, a sandy track and the one that is not sandy. So on ideal line, obviously as the bikes are, are crossing the, the path, they're cleaning the track. So there is not so much sand, but here on the inside, it's a bit more yellow. So that is also a bit easy easy indicator to to see what what are the ideal lines and this is what i talked about so after the left hander comes the right hander which is leading to the longest straight this is this one so the back straight on uh, international layout and it's super super important to exit out of this uh, corner as fast as possible to carry this speed through all the straight because if you mess up the entry on the straight you lose the time all over the, the the straight so our main priority is to exit this corner properly and to keep the momentum going this was by the way filmed on a track day so some of the racers are slower there's different different levels of racers this this guy is on a 1000 so that's why he went so fast on the straight. But let's go back a little bit onto the breaking point. Now, there are quite a few markers you can go about on, but the one I found the most, um, the best for me, so to say, is uh, this, actually this orange pole. I think it's for marshals or something. So this orange pole is the closest to my breaking point as I could because obviously here you see the asphalt change but that's way too early to break and then you have later this uh, this plates with that display uh, how how far away you are from the corner so 100 meters uh, 50 meters and so on and I found out that uh, breaking uh, on 100 meter is is impossible because you you're just too fast and you carry on so what I found as a best breaking marker is this right here, this orange thing. Uh, and I break exactly on it or when I'm pushing, once again, 
a little bit afterwards, but not much. So here is this 100 uh, table that's, as I said, too, too late. And here is my uh, breaking marker. So I break either on it or a bit after it. And one more thing you need to think about is that here you can see the asphalt gets a bit darker. That's because here start the bumps. And why the asphalt is getting darker? Because as the cars and, and other vehicles, not just bikes, are passing through these bumps, on the highest points, uh, you leave the you leave the tire marks. So as your any vehicle passes through the low point, it jumps over it and then it hits the high point. So that's where you leave the, the marks of the tire. And this is why this part is a bit darker. So have in mind, this part is quite bumpy. It doesn't bother me really that much because uh, I'm straight anyway. So yeah, the rear wheel is hopping a little bit, but nothing to be afraid of, honestly. And also I played quite a lot with, uh, with the gearing on this corner. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't really tell on the first what was faster. Should I really go like stop, brake as late as possible, stop in the middle of the corner, rotate the bike and then just shoot out as early as I could? Or should I have a bit more round and corner speed approach? And I found out in the end that uh, the corner speed one, so carrying a bit more corner speed is in the end faster, especially during uh, during race when you when your tires are getting a bit worn out. So when you don't have a fresh tires, maybe on the qualifying with a with a new rubber, you can go stop and go. But uh, for myself personally, the a bit more rounder approach works better. And the difference is also in the gearing. So if you're going late, stopping and then shooting out, I used the first gear because of that uh, aggressive acceleration. But as you carry, if you carry more corner speed, the second gear is powerful enough. So in the end, I, I ended up using a second gear through this corner. But in this particular instance, so in this, in this video, I shifted into, into the first one. You heard that so two gears up i went from first to to third now what i'm using as i told you i'm using second so i shift only one gear up and uh, this is quite an uh, important part of the track one of the most important i would say because uh, after this left corner that comes there comes a straight this is this part look this is the hairpin and then this corner and this doesn't look like a straight, but it's a full throttle. So it has the same effect like the corner before the back straight. The better you exit out on this part of the track, the, the more speed you carry and the faster you are, obviously. So it's really important to, to, to do this, uh, this corner properly. Uh, try to use as much of the track as you can. Here you can see some uh, black tire marks. Those are from cars, not from the bikes. If you went here with the bike, you would certainly end up in this wall over here. So don't do that. But uh, go as much to the white line as you feel comfortable. And then lean into the corner. Don't stop too much. I see many riders here stopping because from this perspective, the corner looks quite, quite closed and quite narrow. But it actually, as soon as you hit the apex, it opens up. So if you stop too much, you'll see in the middle of the corner that you took too much speed off. So what you want to do is, yeah, of course, if you're going hard, if you're pushing, you want to brake a little bit or close the throttle aggressively, but you don't want to uh, take off too much speed. You want to keep that momentum. Smooth on the throttle on the exit and one really really important notice here is i don't know if you could see but right about the point i just passed are one or two big bumps sequential bumps and these can really unsettle your bike i've seen uh, a few guys crashing out here because as soon as you get to accelerate like properly as soon as you take that uh, throttle seriously 
your bike falls down and then the bumps hits the shock and uh, if you're not prepared for this it quite it's quite easily to get high sided out of the seat so what i do here is i don't do anything with the throttle i uh, accelerate progressively so keep that smooth acceleration going but just before the point where the bump is i also i know it already that the bump is there just before this point I stand up a little bit like uh, like the guys on motocross do and what that does is allow the, the bike or allow the, the rear end of your bike to compress without affecting you. So basically you can keep the full throttle, you just jump over it, bike does what it needs to do and then it settles itself back up and when you feel that the bike is stable again then you can you can sit back into your your, your seat. This is quite tricky braking because you're leaned and as I said already before this track is uh, known to be not so grippy in, in some areas or to have sand so I have a certain respect of this braking point so to say uh, because I, di I didn't crash here but I feel like uh, when I'm pushing I feel the most at limit on, on this corner on this one and the, the last corner which leads to the main straight. So here I try to have a bit more respect, maybe break a bit earlier than I could theoretically. But what is really important is this is this section, this corner. And as you can see here, it's not a straight, but the same instance like here, you keep the full throttle. So the, the better you exit out of this corner, it will, uh, it will affect the speed throughout this whole section. And this is also the section I like the most on this track because I'm a fan of uh, undulations. And uh, this one is going down, you're keeping the full throttle and through this corner you're leaned, six gear full, but we'll come to that, uh, to that later. Uh, back to this corner, you're breaking somewhere between 50 and 100, maybe a bit closer to the 50, I would say, but somewhere in this, in this range. And also let's just take a step back. So as I said before, this corner is a third gear corner. You exit out, you pick up the gear and you shift one gear up. You heard it fourth. And here on the braking, you shift two gears down. So from fourth, we go into second and this very important and very tricky corner. Yes, you're stopping, so you need to, to carry that brake inside of the corner. Uh, of course, be careful not to lose the front. You need to take, you cannot brake like fully or so aggressively. But also you need to go with brake in the corner. That's called trail braking. You need to trail brake inside of the corner. And then one also important thing about this corner is that right here, somewhere where this guy is, so somewhere around here there are two bumps they are not so aggressive you can go over them actually i've tried quite a lot of times but they just they tend to unsettle your suspension and then it's uh, it's difficult to exit really really fast if you go over the bumps that's that's why it seems that like i missed the apex here but actually actually that was intentional i wanted to miss those those two bumps to exit as fast as possible and once again, depending uh, on your bike, depending on your riding style, uh, the tire condition, stuff like that, you can uh, ride this particular corner in more of a stop and go type of way, or you can flow a bit more, keep that corner speed and uh, early on the throttle and take that speed that you had uh, from before, take it onto the street. And I chose, uh, because also this bike is not so powerful and I'm quite heavy dude, although I may not seem like it, I have 80 kgs, so that's quite heavy for, for this type of bike. I like to keep that corner speed and keep that momentum going. Have in mind what I said earlier, the paint is very slippery. I went outside a few times and it was uh, 
It was fun, <laughs> but uh, definitely not fast. So uh, keep yourself to that white line, but not over it. Fifth gear, sixth gear, full throttle. And now this is one of, I would say, most uh, scary parts of this uh, particular layout because uh, you need to brake from super high speed. I'd say this is the, the fastest part of the, of the track, except for maybe the back straight. So you're going super fast, but you need to brake under quite a big lean, under quite a bit lean. And that can uh, look dangerous sometimes. That can be dangerous sometimes. So, uh, so um, the first part of the braking needs to be a bit smoother than usual. You cannot brake super aggressively because you don't know the the level of the grip and if you brake super aggressively what might happen is that the front just doesn't hold and it locks the front and that that will look really badly as you can imagine on this speed so what you want to do you want to uh, fight your mind so to speak which is saying break 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 and just make that first touch of the brake smooth and as soon as you feel that the bike starts to go down you apply more, more, more brake and more stopping power. That way I find it uh, much more safer and much more comfortable. But of course, it's hard to say yourself, okay, calm, <laughs> brake calmly when the corner is approaching so fast. And the point where I brake in this instance is a 100 meter, meter table. Or as you can see, here are the two lines. I think they are using them for uh, time recording for the sectors. So I break either on these lines a little bit before the 100 or on the 100 meter marker, depending on uh, how much speed I carry from the straight before. That was a close call. Um, and also this is the corner I play, they call this the ball. On this track, there are two balls. I don't know if this is a big one or small one, I, I don't really remember, but uh, this is one of the balls and why they call it the ball because uh, in real life it's a big, big angle, like it's uh, banking uh, similar like to what NASCAR is using, like the corner is quite banked and uh, this is actually fun, but not just fun, it can help you a lot with your riding here. So I've experimented with this corner quite a lot. And I've tried the uh, stop and turning it quickly and, and shooting out. Or I tried the, the approach that I use now, which is a bit more round. Now, the problem with that round part is that you need to break for a longer period of time and under massive lean, which is not really comfortable, I gotta say. But ultimately, it, I found it a faster way. And in both instances, either if you go V-shaped, so uh, one apex, shoot out and the second apex, or if you go round like I just did now, in both instances, you need to hit this point, this second apex or one apex, however you want. You need to hit this point with your knee once again to exit out properly onto the last two corners. So let's let's look at that. This point, that's crucial to hit. And also I've seen some guys after this point, they just shoot themselves out to the right side. They exit the corner fast, which is maybe faster for this isolated corner. But the problem is that right after it comes a right-hander. So you need to switch your uh, position quite, quite fast. You need to switch your uh, bike from left to right. And if you shoot out uh, too early on the right, you will really be slow and you will really struggle with that upcoming right-hander. So what I like to do is right after this point, I like to keep it a little bit, like maybe a few tenths more on the on the left so that when I exit out the corner, I'm somewhere on the middle of the track and that I have the perfect uh, opportunity to, to take that right-hander. That's, that's what I was talking about. So many, many guys come over here and then they struggle to hit this corner. What I do, I like to keep myself in the middle of the track, already looking towards this point, towards the, that's actually a pit lane table. That's not, that's not so important, but it's my reference to, and to, to make the entry. 
once again really close i missed a little bit the line here but really close to the inside with your knee on the curb so that you have uh, the the so that you use most of the track and also in this corner you need to carry quite a lot of corner speed and open the throttle quite early and it can be tricky this this curb is uh, you cannot see it from the middle of the corner and as you approach it uh, you find yourself on the curb and that uh, scares a lot of people already as I said before uh, it's quite slippery so that scares them even more and what they do is that uh, they shut off the throttle which makes even more problem because the bike wants to go out uh, what you want to do is in a moment before you see the curb so you should already know it's somewhere there but you need to tell yourself which is quite hard sometimes, I know, but you need to tell yourself that uh, you need to keep that throttle opening, to keep the throttle opening, because what that does is uh, either A, make your bike slide, which points the, the front wheel in the direction you want to close it in, or if the rubber is new, it, like on skiing, it makes the bike turn even more. So either way, with more throttle, you're gonna avoid going out uh, too wide so even though it is it looks uh, counter logical more throttle makes you turn better in this particular instance and uh, one of the more tricky at breaking points is the last corner entry into the last corner because it's a uh, downhill you cannot see it on the video but it's quite it's going quite downhill and it's also bumpy and one more thing, here in the middle of the corner, there's even more bumps and there are boxes for the starting grid of the cars because this track is primarily used for uh, cars racing. So they stack cars all the way to the middle of the, of the last corner. And this is where you cross over these uh, starting boxes, wide starting boxes. And as they are not using uh, the proper paint, I would say, the, this paint is quite slippery. So you need to really be careful with your line and with your uh, braking force and stuff like that not to lose the front. I've seen some guys crush over the front here quite easily and <laughs> I've, had some, uh, I've had some moments myself. So gotta be careful of that. fully inside like i told you like i told you before not wasting any part of the track knee on the curb and already here you should be looking outside towards your uh, exit because uh, as you can see this is leading onto the straight uh, finish straight and uh, as i told you before the faster you exit on the straight the faster you are in the end of it and the faster you are during the lap you that is very easy to to gain lap time just to proper uh, to properly exit out of the out of the corner so you're shooting here i'm using all of the curb here you can see the black one i'm using all of the curb here i wouldn't advise you honestly to do that on your first laps when you're when you're learning the track because i had some slides myself here but in the end as you get more comfortable you are here straight anyway so even if the tire slips a bit it doesn't make much difference and uh, it allows you to carry just that much more corner speed on the on the exit and that would be it the the full deep analysis of the dubai autodrome racetrack and now uh, i'll play you one full lap without not me blabbering uh, to, to enjoy one full lap.
So this was my deep analysis of uh, Dubai Autodrome International Layout Circuit. I wanted to do something for my fellow racers because as I was coming uh, here for the first time, there wasn't quite the information on the track for the bikes. There was uh, quite a lot of onboards for formulas, for cars and, uh, and stuff like that. But for bikes specifically, there wasn't much I could find. So. I wanted to make someone's life uh, easier coming here to, to help my uh, fellow racers and to share some knowledge with you. If you are interested in uh, more details about this particular track or any other, or if you however want to learn personalized uh, from me one-on-one, -on -one, we can do that. We can arrange uh, something. I do schooling one-on-one -on -one throughout the Europe. Uh, find out all my uh, social networks in the description, find out my contact there. Uh, also, I'm quite a regular poster on all the social media, so any news you can follow uh, both my racing career and uh, my uh, coaching. So, if you're interested in that, uh, get in touch with me and for more videos, like I said, like, comment, share, subscribe. Whatever, you know what you gotta do. Love you. Bye-bye.